Hey, welcome back. This is Within the Madness, the men's edition. Knocked out the women's portion a little bit earlier this evening. Um, look, uh, late game update from last night in the Midwest region. 12 uh, 4 upset Oregon State beat Oklahoma State 80 to 70. They were, uh, you know, as far as Oregon State goes, they were exceptionally poised down the stretch of that game. We watched one team be extremely erratic and another team just calmly do what they needed to do to survive in advance. Um, as far as tonight, we got a, a couple late games. One just ended uh, two seed Alabama, uh, beat 10 seed Maryland 96 77. Um, and then at halftime, this is the game we talked about a couple days ago. I'm sure, I'm pretty sure I can speak for everyone. No one here is shocked that uh, third seed of Kansas, they, they in some trouble at the half against the Mobley boys of USC. Um, USC leads 40 to 21. Uh, Kansas, you got another half to get your stuff together. Otherwise, um, you know. We'll be talking about you tomorrow night, like we were just talking about uh, <laughs> Oklahoma State. Uh, you'll be joining. At least you, you know, at least you have company if you don't finish the job. A lot of folks fell today, both the men's and the women's side. Uh, we're gonna get started in the West tonight, though. Yeah, All right, on the West we had seven seed Oregon. They upset it. Uh, seventh seeded Oregon upset it. Two seeded Iowa. 95-80 to advance to the round of 16. Y'all have at it. Man, they could Oregon guards. <laughs> oh, oh, Oregon guards. Uh, when I say they took Iowa guards, made them disappear, they made them disappear. Look, look, look here, man. Iowa, Frederick, McCaffrey, Bohannon, zero points. Zero points, bro. I mean, I've never seen that happen. I've never seen that happen in my life. I've never seen donuts for three of your starting guards. Huh? Like that bad shooting, cool. You get exposed defensively. All right, I hate zero. So, I mean, what would have happened if Luca ain't have an all time performance? <laughs> yeah, 30, 36 and nine. Like, he ain't had no help. Like, that's called what it is. Oregon guards took turns just cooking Iowa's guards, just abusing them. And that's that's the result. We don't even need to look at anything else. I don't care about percentages and all that. I'm just looking <laughs> at four guys in Oregon starting lineup that had double figures. The lowest uh Omuri, he had 17. Seven between 17 to 23 points, four guys had in uh Oregon starting lineup. Go to go to Iowa, you got Garza with 36, you got West, West Ham with 17, donut for the rest of them on the perimeter. <laughs> We don't need to talk about nothing else, though. That's the best game. Ray, you want to add anything? <laughs> For what? They couldn't stop a nosebleed, man. They got torched. Plain and simple. Wait, wasted, right. wasted that man Garza final good game, man. <laughs> That's tough. Uh, Gonzaga, one seed. They started a little slow, but uh, they got back on track before the end of the first half. Close the first half strong, and you already know what happened after that. Uh they didn't look back. They beat Oklahoma in eight seed, 87, 71. You guys had any comments about that one? Y'all want to keep it moving? Go ahead. The hippie, man. Timmy. Uh <laughs> oh, what's it called? My bad. Someone uh, you know how they always post like those the the like the high school balls life clips, but not like the mixtapes, but like when they're doing like King of the Court and things like that. Somebody posted a video of Timmy before he had that ridiculous mustache. I'm just trying to figure out why. What was the decision to grow grow that? <laughs> and then and then got the the Bill Walton John with the right, hair right, mask. Right. Like, that's why I'm like he looked like he straight out the '70s. Don't like like he, he, he used to run with Bill Walton and them back in the day. But um, you know it's all jokes and fun. I don't mean no disrespect. But hey man, 30, 13, and four. Hey you go, hey you can look however you want when you post no numbers. Do what you do, dog. All right, got. You can bring back the John Stockton shorts, high socks, with the little rings at the top around them. Do what you do. Chucks, if you put up them numbers, you would not hear a complaint from me. I, I, I'm quiet. But, yeah, he dominated inside. He dominated over for, I mean, uh, Oklahoma. Uh, he dominated those guys. Uh, they had no answer. Uh, Oklahoma's uh, front court hill, 11 points, three rebounds. Uh, Manic, three points, five rebounds. Uh, they just had no answer for him. He set the tone. Uh, then Kisper Suggs. Follow suit. I love how they put Nemar, who used to be at Florida, they put him in the starting lineup to kind of run things because, you know, Suggs a dog. You know, he's more of a combo guard or whatever. He can run. He, he can run the show, but he's he's a dynamic player. You want you want to see him attack, and uh, he can get busy on defense. I know the hard foul on him 
you know, woke Gonzaga up where he's like, all right, we, we about to get y'all up out of here, you know, in a sense. <laughs> Um, when Gonzaga was uh, blitzing them, uh, you know, in the first half, they shot a hard foul. You know, that happens in basketball. They try to send a hard foul to kind of shake y'all up, get you off your game, test you to see if you soft or whatever. And um, Gonzaga rallied behind them. Uh, and they just finished them off, man. You know, uh, Gonzaga got a shot, man. We we all know that. Uh, everybody was focused on subs. Timmy didn't really get a lot of attention at all, even though he's been producing all year being highly efficient inside and out. But, uh, yeah, they're going to be a hard out, man. They're they a problem. And the Yayi, 12 points and eight rebounds. Uh, can't sleep on him either, man. It's just all-around production. That's why they're hard to beat. They're very hard. And they're well you, – you, you if you watch the game, they're just – they're highly co- – they're well coached, man. They, they don't make mistakes, man. You, you It's like, uh, well, Duke. They remind me a lot of Duke-level – in the late 90s, early 2000s, uh, with Jay Will and all those guys, man, they, you got to beat them, man. They're not going to yeah. beat themselves. You got to, you got to beat them. And it's hard as hell to beat those teams, man. So, Gonzaga got that kind of vibe, man. If they keep playing like this, uh, they're going to they, they win this thing. And then, um, Anton Watson off the bench, I think he was a spark plug. Like he came in, got back to back turnovers. And from that point on, Gonzaga just steamrolled them. You know, they, they did start off a little sluggish, but, you know, they just needed a spark plug. Once that flame was lit, it was a wrap. All right, we're going to move on. Uh, Creighton, they got off to a fast start in the first half, and they ran past 13 seed at Ohio, 72-58 to advance. All right, going to go uh, to the East region unless someone had something about the Creighton win? No? Self-explanatory. Cool. All right, UCLA beat Avalon Christian, 67-47. Um, complete performance from them as they continue to move on. UCLA gave them a little bit of love. They ended up in the play-in game, and they're still alive. They're still dancing right now um, on their way to the Sweet 16. Um, all right, here's one we're definitely going to get to. Michigan, they advanced to the Sweet 16 after a hard-fought battle with LSU. So I'm going to pull that clip up, and y'all go ahead and uh, talk about what you saw from that game. First of all, Cameron Thomas, who we <laughs> freshman. Man, hold on, I'm gonna tell y'all a story before we get into this. So, uh, you know, I'm not saying no names. It was a teammate on there uh, that played with him at first on this AAU team, mm-hmm. and uh, he wasn't really getting minutes because it was Cam Thomas in the backcourt with uh, which young boy that's going to Western Kentucky, uh, uh, the point guard. Dang, I forget his name. He's at the top 100 camp. Uh, I forget his name right now. But they, they, you know, four or five star guards. They tough. All right. So, you know, his peoples were saying, you know, it was favoritism towards Cam and all that. I'm like, this dude's the leading scorer in Oak Hill history. There is no favoritism. But at the end of the day, if you're going against these guys that are at that level every day in practice and stuff, it's only going to make you better. You know what I'm saying? So they didn't want to hear it. Like, fine. Took him off the team, put him on a lesson on AAU team. That guy got back to playing what he played, how he played. You know what I'm saying? Being a featured guy with him, stuff like that. Now you clearly see it wasn't no favoritism. It's just that Wu Williams knows what the hell he's doing. Uh, this dude is straight to the league, and the, and the kid I'm talking about didn't play much as a freshman, if at all, um, at a low major. This dude coming in as a freshman, dropping 20 plus at a high major in SEC, goes out in the tournament with 30 points on 10 and 23. That's just a great example of, in a sense, delusion. From for for a player and not being real with yourself. Like I keep saying, the fact that he's the leading scorer at Oak Hill out of all those monsters that have came through there yeah. speaks volumes. You know, man, he he's a natural bucket. He reminds me so much of Lou Williams. And I, and I mean Lou Williams when he was young, explosive and all that, just a he's just a bucket, man. It is what it he gonna find a way to put that thing in a bucket and he has no conscience, man. It's just he's somebody Lou, he's just Lou Williams, dog. Give him, give him the ball, bring him in off the bench. That's thirty. You can count on every night. And for him to perform like that against Michigan guards, I know Livers is out or whatnot, but they still got a lot of top flight guards. That's why they're winning like they've been doing. It's not just Hunter. It's not just Wagner or whatnot. They got some guard dynamic guard play that they all different in their own way, but they get it done. And for him, it's just torture. I mean, I was seeing him in the game post up Michigan guards 
and do the little fake reverse fadeaway like Jordan and Kobe. I'm like, oh, he got that already as a freshman. Look right here. Wow. This this mm. Come on now. Come on now. It's pros that's like in the 13th year that don't even got that dog. Like he has that already. Six three guard freshman. You feel that boy is special, dog. It, he got one in the 18th there. year that just learned how to do it. Oh shit. Man, you about to have these damn coats. Man, look, Raymond Lyon said that. Uh, give me your Twitter. Hit him up, man. I don't feel like dealing with y'all tonight. Man. God damn. I'm not in the mood. Y'all gonna get cussed out. But uh, <laughs> but but overall, uh, you know, boy. But to be honest, uh, just uh, Michigan, Michigan poised in the execution late in the game, uh, especially in the second. Uh, the second half just wore LSU down. Uh, LSU for as good as Cam Thomas and those guys are. Javante Smart had a great game, uh, 27 points, almost a triple double, nine rebounds, uh, six assists. Obviously, their backcourt is just is strong at LSU. Uh, even even Watford, he you know he's a problem, but he had a matchup with Hunter, and that size difference matters. And Wagner, you know, but he's only six nine, seven one, and Wagner six ten. It's just hard to deal with that. Uh, you know, it came down to the death, and Michigan had more death than um, the LSU. Uh, Hunter, even though he's played by foul trouble, this is this is why you should, even when you well coach, you can always make an impact you know, regardless of any situation. And, he, and obviously, he's been in this situation before playing at the Matha, you know, playing against the little, you know, little fours who try to get away. He pick up city fouls and stuff. He knows how to still make an impact while in foul trouble. 12 points, 11 rebounds, uh, three assists, you know, 31 minutes. Um, four or seven shooting. He didn't force anything. He just played a, a, a solid, a solid, uh, solid all around game. Efficient all around game. Um, Wagner, fifteen points, uh, five and nine from the field. They that that was the edge. Did front court play because uh, what Cam did, what, what Smart did, uh, they put the rest of the guards on Michigan on on their heels. Uh, I know Brooks. He he turned it up five and nine from three, and they needed every bit of that. Um, Brown, he came off the bench. Shadi Brown, who I've been like, I've liked him all year. He don't get he don't, he he's the he's the X factor for them. He don't get enough um he don't get enough shine to me because uh I know he only averaged seven you know seven to two, but he came up big in some games when Michigan really needed a boost. He always kind of came through and made shots and made plays. Uh, senior six five two fifteen. He's only pivotal uh, especially with livers out so. I mean, like I said, he had 21 points off the bench in a, in a drag out game. You know what I mean? He always seems to show up when Michigan needs need somebody. Juwan's looking for somebody, and he always to do to be like, I got a coach, and he goes to work. Uh, 21 points, six and nine shooting, three or six from three, six or six from the free throw line. Uh, enough said. So they just had more players that made more plays in the second half, and uh, that's why they're moving on. Yeah, man, they were uh, they were really disciplined because uh, LSU they only had three turnovers. And they got up 16 more shots than Michigan. And they lost. Like that's if if you look at that and see that, you you would have think they won, especially with the with the big game from uh Javante Smart and Cam Thomas. And then uh, Michigan, they was in a penalty with eight minutes left in the game and only committed one more foul. You know, they and they won by eight. So I mean, you know, if they if they not as sharp defensively and and they just being reckless, and they put them on line and stop the clock, and they just getting points with no time right now, and giving L- LSU extra time. So, um, so yeah, man, they we, we got to give some love to Juwan for that because yeah. he, he got he got them dudes ready. So, um, so yeah, man, they 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 gonna be a tough out, man. The one of the, <laughs> the last man standing for the Big Ten. So, uh, that's why they the champs. So, yeah. I mean, I've been saying they were the best team in the Big Ten. And, and you know, y'all know who my team is, man, but you just got to be real. Mm-hmm. And I'm always keeping 100, man. They just – and honestly, if Livers had played, uh, it, it might have been uh, more of a blowout, you know what I'm saying? But uh, Michigan's strong, man. They got everything. So I wouldn't be surprised to see them and, and Gonzaga make it. Those are two best teams I've seen so far in the tournament. Well, all year, honestly. All right, last but not least, we had uh, OC Florida State taking on Colorado. Um, they <laughs> Florida State won. They advanced. We got a fun matchup next round. 
um, Michigan yeah. and Florida State, I believe. It's one of the matchups in the Sweet 16. Defense. Yep. Leonard Hamilton <laughs> with them damn six, eight wings, athletic. I mean, yeah. seven yeah. foot wingspan, like them dudes that we was at the we had our draft show last year, well, last winter. And we like, what the hell? They get drafted as freshmen and stuff like that. Like, and he just reloads with those guys. He just mm-hmm. reloads. And and I'm gonna give you an example of what that does. Their defense. Jabari Walker gave Georgetown 24, right? Mm. Zero tonight. <laughs> I know he's a freshman. Freshman gotta be freshman. Donut tonight. They, they, no, we donut in 24 minutes. They was not having it. They keyed in on him, and they like somebody else gonna have to do it, dog. Like it ain't gonna be you, so uh, they held him to thirty five percent shooting from the field as a team, twenty four percent from three. Uh, turn them boys over nineteen times. <laughs> I mean, look, man, and it ain't even like they shoot. I mean, look, man, and and the thing I like about you said discipline about Florida State. Uh, I mean, about Michigan, Raymond, Florida State. They're disciplined as well. They don't get enough credit for offensively. They do; those guys do not take shots they're not supposed to take. So it looks like it looks like guys are not scoring a lot of stuff like that. It's like no, they take the shots they're supposed to, and they strap, and that's how they beat you. So they're gonna make you work on defense. Meanwhile, they're built to work on defense, so they don't mind you trying to make them work. They they love it. That's how Leonard Hamilton gets them and. The guys that's supposed to score, like the light and all those guys and all that, they do what they're supposed to do, man. And and um, uh, like what's their seven foot center name? Uh Koprivica. He had seven points. Well, you know, well he had five, but he only shot the ball, he was two for two. So why didn't he keep shooting the ball? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Eleven minutes. But he averages nine to six. You like they they're just disciplined. They're hard to beat because it's like mm-hmm. where you want you can't attack them. They're gonna lock that up. And then offensively, you don't know where it's coming from, but you know it's coming. You can't really speed them up and force them into bad actions or bad plays and stuff. So this is what happens. They wear you down. And then the second half, you're so tired, it's just – unless you're hitting some Hail Mary shots or something like that, it's a wrap for you. So, I mean, this is Leonard Hamilton, man. He got a shot. Like, people don't want to admit it. The last few seasons, Florida State's running the ACC. It ain't the Blue Bloods. So yeah, look at the results. It's, it's calling it like it is. It's been consistent too. Mm-hmm. It's been consistent. And look, man, they got a recipe. He sticks to it. It looks like it's proven. There's no need to mess with it. Um <laughs> I mean, look, look, at this, look at the roster. Look at yeah. look, look who they seven. So if you make a mistake, he got somebody he can go to that can get the job done. So it makes you want to play. Do what he tell you to do, right? <laughs> There's no hesitation. Next man up. This dude acting like, he, oh, he got to be back door. Next man up. Oh, oh, he think he James Harden a, taking a step back three? Next man. Sub, let's go. And you might not see the dude no more. It's a couple dudes that only got in the game for one minute. Look, man, it ain't like he pulling walk-offs, walk-ons off that bench. <laughs> <laughs> Some cases he's pulling a better you off the bench. MJ he's Walker, not him. Come here. Right. MJ Walker averages twelve. Look, he only had three shots, two for three, seven points. <laughs> dudes were outside grade. Dudes were efficient shooting the ball. They just ain't shoot it up a lot. Mm-hmm. They worked that shot clock, and when they got somebody got the shot, they took it, and it was polite. It was his night, and he made them. Then they come down the other end. You ain't getting no love down here, dog. <laughs> Man, that thing. All those comfortable threes Colorado got against Georgetown. Cancel all that. <laughs> like with them dudes closing out on you is way different. Uh, they they closing out with five different types of NBA length. <laughs> <laughs> five different types. <laughs> Here's all the different things you can see on the next level, courtesy of our the five that we have on the floor. <laughs> Come on, man. It's ridiculous. Look, what are Ray, Go ahead. Uh, Raekwon Gray, 6'8". Cabrivica, 7'1". Uh, Evans is 6'4". I'm just reading all sides. Walker, 6'5". And these ain't some skinny 6'4", 6'5". They ain't 220. They be in the weight room, dog. So let's get it. Oh, Anthony Polite, 6'6", 215. Let's keep going. Osborne, 6'9", 225. 
uh, Scotty Barnes, who's probably their you know highest projected draft pick or whatever. Freshman, 6'9", 227. Uh, Prieto, 6'8", 230. Like I said, Dom, 7'1", 236. Uh, Ballard, <laughs> Ballard, 6'11", 240. Out of New York. Calhoun, 6'6", 220. Uh, Jack, 6'5", 185. I'm just trying to give y'all an idea what you're dealing with. 6'8", well, Will, 6'8", 220, Junior. 11 minutes. Miles, a senior, 6'6", 220. And light six five one eighty smallest dude you got on that roster six four so they got a roster six four forty seven one and he threw all them boys out there. Hey bro, you named two people under two hundred pounds. They both guards. Jesus Christ! <laughs> and it's they a bunch of here. six eight. It's a bunch of six eight twenty twenty pound dudes that are athletic that can move and that, and that's how they're gonna try to beat teams. They're gonna just try to. Lock you up, just just destroy your confidence offensively, and then they got the rest. Because, like you said, like, uh, what they had 19 turnovers that's what Florida State want to do, they want to run, yep, and use that athleticism and left and put on a dunk show. <laughs> that's 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 the NBA roster, that's my exactly, that's the NBA yeah. roster, even that's the NBA roster. It's just I don't have nothing else to say. That's a whole NBA. Yeah, think about that. About so that. all year you practicing against all that size all year. You ain't tripping off nobody out in the college. Practice like going to the cup and practice is tougher than games. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> just you know. And like you said, he blew out his Achilles, so you can't be soft out there. Your coach limping around and stuff. So I mean, you gotta play. You gotta go on, dog. So yeah, they gonna be a tough out. They gonna be a tough out. They definitely got a shot too. They right there too. Them in Michigan, that's a war. That's gonna be fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the that. Hey, look, that's the only thing I put in my notes in terms of like looking ahead. Right, I was like, oh, they might be playing Michigan next. I'm watching that full game. I don't care what else going on. I'm gonna be- <laughs> I mean, that deserves the undivided attention. That's yes. Because whoever come out of that, you don't got to see someone else like that again the rest of the way. Exactly. Right. So the championship. Yeah. <laughs> Or final four at least, yeah. but yeah, champion somewhere around that range. Yeah. That's crazy. Hey, we want to thank you guys for hanging with us this evening. Um, on all in whichever way that you watched, uh, we'll be back with the within the madness tomorrow night. The women's are still going, they, they got to catch up to the men's in terms of they're around two behind, so they just got to the round of 32. Uh, tomorrow on Wednesday, they'll be playing so they can get to the round of 16. And then when we reconvene this weekend from the end, within the madness. That's going to be the men's in the 16 already. And they're going to be trying to get to the eight. So we were getting there. Um, looking forward to it. Don't forget tomorrow night, Tuesday nights, 8 p.m., Focus TV. Got a lot going on, as always. It'll be our 201st episode. See, for once, I actually know the episode number. Was kind of happening off. So I'm patting myself on the back. But y'all have a great night. We're going to see you guys later. <laughs>